Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Figure It Out cast for uh, November 2019. I'm your host, Adam Corlick. Thank you very much for being here. And today's a special episode because we have two guests on. Uh, we have Gaming Off The Grid. Uh, with uh, This was actually sponsored by a Patreon backer named Wubio, who has done this before, where he had people on from the Saturn, junk, uh, Saturn Junkyard and stuff. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us uh, here. And, you know, it's cool. Unlike most guests who have ever been on the show, I've actually met you. Uh, I've yeah. met, I met these guys for the first time. We met what Missouri last year? Yeah, Mo GameCon. Yeah, Mo GameCon. We, we, we took we a were photo just getting together started together. back then. We were you babies. You guys weren't at Mo GameCon this year. What happened? We were there. You were? You were? Why didn't you say anything? Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> damn, I think that's we've cold, seen man. each other in, <laughs> in passing. You no, you were working at that table with the uh, the Super Nintendo PlayStation or something. I wasn't like working. Everybody thinks I work at every table I'm at because <laughs> I just hang around tables, and everybody thinks like even I was at uh, PRGE this year, and I'm hanging around the Marseille booth, I'm hanging around the Nintendo PlayStation booth, and everybody's like, "He, Jason, Metal Jesus, even was like, dude, how many booths do you work at?'" I'm like, "Zero, <laughs> nothing. I, I hang around. <laughs> I'm just I just make friends with everybody, and then everybody thinks I work there." Yeah, I stopped in, and I remember I was trying to be like not, you know, fangirl and stuff. I was like, "Hey, I don't know if you remember us or not." And you, you said you did, but you were you had a bunch of people talking to you too, so I kind of tiptoed away. See, with without the the, the iconic clothing you typically wear, like your jackets, hat, you know, it's harder. But no, I of course I remember both of you. We took that nice photo in front of that the banner and everything. Oh yeah, yeah dude, you know, I remember that. Yeah, you, this year are you going back to Mo Game Con? Oh, absolutely. That's our. That's the con we go to every wear year. The, wear the iconic clothes. It's it's like your look. Yeah, that's like, that, trust that's me, our if con attire. I've been doing this for ten years. I dress like a cartoon character, but I always stand out. <laughs> I'm like a Bart Simpson. I just walk around. Oh, that's that guy because he always dresses like crap. You guys don't dress like crap. You dress like flair, gaming flair. You gotta rock that. Yep, Rick we Flair. Know, we're gonna keep that. that, that it's, the, it's the look. That's my pro tip for you. All right. So anyway, thank you very much for coming on the show, and thank you to Wubio for making that happen. Yeah, thank now, you so much for having us. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, as part of that, uh, Wubio, uh, as part of doing that, you guys get to choose all the subjects. So you, the first thing you chose, I thought it was actually pretty good, pr kind of embarrassing that I never you know, came up with this one myself, <laughs> um, Beginner's Guide to the Dreamcast. So I'm going to let you guys lead it off here. Yeah, um, so I thought that would be a good topic because, I mean, that's your, your, your system that you're really uh, an you know, expert on. And uh, I think, you know, it's a, a misunderstood console, and we've actually heard some stuff with its birthday just happening, right? Um, people saying that it's, you know, it's overrated and all this stuff. And so I, I just think it'd be fun to talk about, like, if someone was to buy a Dreamcast today and they had, you know, to pick up three or three to five games and some accessories, what should they get? Um, and I think um, a great start to the system would be Jet Grind Radio. Oh, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong with that game. No, that's a fantastic game. I think, personally, much better than the Xbox sequel. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I like them both, but I do like that first one better. I just, growing up, I didn't even know the Dreamcast was a console. I just, I remember a, a neighbor had it, and I was like, dude, what is this? Like, I didn't know it was a thing. So, the Dreamcast is, like, kind of new to me, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, I I mean, I've told my story on it in videos before, but I agree with, the, like, all right, if I had to pick three to five games, the obvious ones for me are going to be Shenmue 1 and 2, because I mean, that's yeah. just, like, my identity. Uh, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Power Stone 1 and 2. See, the problem is you start going way past that number. <laughs> yeah, it's you like, know? oh, that's more than five. <laughs> Jet, Grand, yeah, exactly. Jet Grand Radio is a, a fantastic choice, or Jet Set Radio. Um, maybe Soul Calibur? Yep, that's a, it's great on that console for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, like, you, obviously you could keep going, but I guess if I had to had to keep it to just three, Shenmue 1 and 2 and Sonic Adventure 1. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, that, those are good picks. Ball. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your favorite, like, peripherals? Are you into light gun games at all? Not really, only because it's kind of hard to use them in the modern age. Like, I yeah. can use them on my Dreamcast kiosk. I've even done a video doing specifically that, but like aside from that, not really, because there's only like a few. House of the Dead's cool, but if I for some reason really wanted to play it, I guess you could do like Typing of the Dead. It's basically yeah. the same game. Um, yep. The one that I always found was the the weirdest was Demolition Racer and how it had that like light gun mode where you shoot at cars. Do you remember that? I've uh, never I played actually that. I don't remember playing that. The other one that I remember playing was Confidential Mission, and it just had oh, a yeah. high, high cheese factor. And I loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Most of them did. It was fantastic. But. Yeah, without the right TV, that that unfortunately is a lot harder. But there was only like six or seven, like Death Crimson Ox and stuff like that. Was Death Crimson Two, I think, also. 
Um, but yeah, the, the one I would say check out if you've never played it is Demolition Racer No Exit, which is a racing game. has a mini game in it that uses the light gun where you just like shoot at cars. That's right. pretty <laughs> sweet. I'm going to have to look that <laughs> up after yeah, this. Look that one up. Um, yeah, so what, what other accessories do you guys think are good? Um, I mean, yeah, obviously you got to get uh, the, the memory card. I, I always uh, think that that was so far ahead of its time. I think if you were starting to collect it, obviously you need it to save games. But just from a... You know, a collector standpoint, I think it's a, a very unique um, thing that they did with that. And the way you could transfer files, the screen, the the little, you know, mini games that would be on there, which weren't all that great. But, you know. It's just cool that it did that. It's yeah. so cool. I agree. It was capitalizing on the whole Tamagotchi thing. Yep. Um, sure. But by the time it was out, Tamagotchis were, like, totally dead. Um, <laughs> but it was still, like, cool yeah, as a concept. And it's, like, it was the same basic idea that Wii U had, but years earlier. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I liked it when games really took advantage of it. Even if I don't really care about sports games, I thought it was neat that the NFL games would show you your plays like on that screen so yep. that the other player couldn't see what you were doing. That was practical. Um, I liked practical applications. Resident Evil 2, or I think it was all the Resident Evil games, would show your, your health like in it as opposed to Resident Evil games when you had to go into the menu to see what your condition was. You could just look yep. down on the Dreamcast VMU. Like... Other than the Wii U, I don't think any other console ever could do that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's crazy. No, and it, it's kind of weird, but I always got this, like, just little little excitement when I would put in a new game just to see what would show up on there. Like, I, it was just, I was like mm-hmm. a little nugget, like, man, what's the graphic going to look like on the VMU? I used to get so excited for that. You know, I still do that, because when I get, like, the new indie Dreamcast games, they usually take advantage of it, too, and I'm like, oh, right, they did something, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's, I was just excited. I was just playing one of them recently. I just don't remember which, and it like used the Sega Saturn as like its image in the VMU. And I was like, "That's neat." I don't know why you yeah. did that, but that's cool. Interesting. One of the indie games. <laughs> what was it? I don't know. It was one of the shoot 'em ups. I want to say like, I want to say Redux. You ever yeah, play that? I, I haven't. Uh, I don't think, anyways, unless it's on like a collection or something. No, I it was a standalone it. independent release from a few years ago. It's like that and Ducks. They were shoot 'em ups, shmups, whatever. And they, one of them, I can't remember which, one of them uses like the Sega Saturn as its like image for some nice. reason when you play it on the Dreamcast. Or at least something that looks a lot like a Sega Saturn. That's really weird, but it's kind of cool. It kind of makes me happy for some reason. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's neat. Um, I'm trying to think of other accessories. I, I know Japan. Japan, they had a lot of strange accessories that you go like, wow, how did you even think to release that? Like the karaoke device. Yeah. Um, the, the karaoke device. Okay, in Japan, karaoke is popular, but like the only thing that worked with it was the proprietary software that came with it. So it was like essentially one game to buy this entire like hardware bundle. And it's just play karaoke. Um, stuff like that would never come out here. But uh, we got the fishing rod. Yeah. And what console? What was the last console that released a fishing rod? Um, yeah, you know, I obviously uh, they uh, probably had like a some weird plastic one for the Wii, but it wasn't the ac- it wasn't an true. actual controller. Didn't they? Didn't the Game Boy have something like related like the to sonar fishing? Thing? Yeah, it was yeah. something yeah, yeah. something that, close that to that. Thing. Actually, Norm, gaming historian, just did did a video on that. I I have that for the uh, Bandai Wonder Swan. Funny enough. Um, nice. But no, but like the fishing rod was you know just for like Sega bass fishing and stuff. Although. Do you remember hearing there was a developer at Midway who figured out how to make motion controls out of the fishing rod? Really? Look it up. This dude like actually sued Nintendo because he claimed the Wii stole his like tech. Wow. Yeah, it's it's an old infamous story. I don't think he ever I think he lost, but still it was interesting. You can technically use it for motion controls on the Dreamcast. Wow. That is, that is neat. That is really yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Uh it's just weird. It's a it's a weird console. I feel like Sega they were just uh they like same thing with the Saturn. I don't know if it was that they were too early to the party or too late to the party with certain things, but the timing of both those consoles were just kind of, kind of did them in. Yeah, one can analyze Sega forever and come up with all of the issues that they had, and each each one is totally different, and it always results from the mistakes of the previous incarnation. Yeah. So the Dreamcast like did almost everything right, but by the time it was on the market, faith in Sega was like at an all time low to the point where. Sega actually considered not putting the name Sega on the Dreamcast because they thought really? that would, the name actually would hurt it. And wow. debatably, they were right. Yeah. Um, so it is it is fascinating. But they just ran out of money. That's really what killed them with the Dreamcast. 
I think that's why people love the Dreamcast so much, is because unlike most consoles that fail, they fail because they're crap and they have nothing. The Dreamcast failed and had everything. So you're like, why did it fail? Yeah, it's so cool. It, it's such a unique and like cool console. Like the, from the controller to the way the console looks, it's just so weird how it failed, you know. But obviously, with the Sega name and stuff. Yeah, didn't help. Um, so anything else you guys want to say about a beginner's guide to the Dreamcast? No, I think uh, I think people should just you know give it a chance. You know, for anybody who thinks that it you know I think it also is I think it's a tough console to you know uh, this is kind of going down a different different rabbit hole I think, but I, have, I I kind of view it a little bit like the Wii U in the sense that the console really got ported to death after its mm-hmm. failure. So like it's it's hard for people to really appreciate the games that it had to offer because they were then subsequently ported to every console, right? PS2, Xbox, you know. It ported it to, to literally. I don't know. I mean, there's a few games that you can't get anywhere else, but um, so it's hard to like look at it in a vacuum and, and know how cool it was at the time. But I think you just really get it, got to give it a chance. I completely agree with that assessment. I was actually thinking about that not too long ago, and I'm like, of all the major releases that I always recommend to people, Crazy Taxi 2 is the only one that's still exclusive to the Dreamcast. Yeah, which is cool and depressing yeah it's yeah, it it is. depressing um, you know it's it's always a, it's always cool to, i think for people to have a low barrier of entry to playing a game however they they have the means to play it but it does when you're you know two or two or three talking heads like us talking about mm-hmm. how great a console is it kind of diminishes the shine a little bit that's true oh the other thing you got to get accessory wise you got to get hdmi cables and things like that make your dreamcast look good it's fantastic yeah, uh, this may or may not be something that people like to hear, but we still run CRTs for everything. Um, because uh, Partially because we're such light gun fans, but we like playing stuff the way that it was, and so we're kind of those weird hoarding dudes that have like 10 CRTs. We actually, no da- judgment. We actually downgrade our HDMI consoles to CRTs, <laughs> which is funny. But I, I want to see that in action. That sounds like painful <laughs> like, it's a it's a pretty actually a pretty smooth setup uh, believe it or not it works pretty well um for screen cap streaming etc we just got three wires on the ground that they, they do the whole work I'm just, a bunch of switch boxes well okay like I, I always tell people like look here's how i do it and here's how i like it but you don't have to do this just do it's a fucking video game just do it yeah, the way you yeah, want to play there's it a thousand ways to skin a cat you just gotta mm-hmm. find the way that works for you mm-hmm. so robert any other thoughts uh on this uh, no, like, like I said earlier, like the Dreamcast is like kind of new to me because I didn't know it was a thing growing up. So like, I'm kind of I feel like I'm kind of in the beginner's aspect to it because it was just recently brought to my attention. But I love it. It's such a cool console and like give it a shot. If you've never played the Dreamcast, do it. The controller so is I weird. Ask you, was this conversation at all enlightening? Did it help? It did, and now I want to look stuff up. Like I'm I'm very curious and intrigued about a lot of things right now. Oh, good. Um, before we go on to the next subject, it occurs to me that I never let you guys do a proper introduction, so please introduce yourselves. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're fine. So we're Gaming Off the Grid, um, two-man channel. Um, I'm Wes. I'm Robert. That's it? Yep. <laughs> like, and, where can and, they find you? Uh, I mean, yeah, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, just in case anybody's wondering, like, how did Robert not know what a Dreamcast is? It might help to know that our age dynamic. Um, so I was born in 86. Robert was born in 94. So he, um, he, his first console that I think he played was the N64. So that's kind of important to understand when you, you know, go through topics with us, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. We're a pretty new YouTube channel, I'd say, like a year and a half, maybe. Um, I met you, you at do, the inception. Uh, yeah. I was yeah. there. You were there, man. You were there. I think uh, we had like 32 subs. <laughs> you, man. Which is pretty um, crazy. Yeah, and we do we do just talk about games, kind of a couch co-op setup type. And, and we, we do, do beer reviews. craft beer, so it's kind of a niche thing. Well, yeah, all right, this is not related to anything, but if I, I – so I just went to the last Blockbuster, like right before PRG. I saw those picks. So one of the things I was, they used to brew their own like craft beer there. Now I don't drink, but what Did I was they gonna really? try to do is just buy a ton of those and bring them to people at PRGE. And you were on my list, <laughs> but I, I, they don't sell it anymore. Man, oh, that would have been lovely. so cool. I, I would have put it on the shelf. I would, that would be a display piece. Yeah, they have them like a couple left in their like little museum bit, but 
Just know I tried. I tried yeah, to get. I tried awesome. to like seriously. I just tried to like buy a ton of them, and I was just gonna bring them up and just like, who likes beer? <laughs> Here you <laughs> go. <laughs> but yeah, we uh, didn't uh, work out. We uh, said when we started the channel, uh, I, we might even have said it in an episode, like, if if we ever got free beer, that's as big as we ever cared to get. And that happened to us, like, two months in. So for the, we're, we're playing with house money at this point. We're ahead mm-hmm. of the curve. We're set for life. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Again, thank you very much for joining us. So now let's go back to the normal flow. <laughs> we'll go to the next subject. And, uh, Wes, I think you kind of already kind of hit this subject, but I'm gonna let, we're going to bring it up anyway. The most underrated console outside of the Dreamcast. You said the Wii U, right? Yeah, um, in recent memory, um, as far as, you know, there are some obviously more underrated consoles, but that I, at least that I feel have that mark of quality that I just think was misunderstood. Um, I, I really think the Wii U, and I, I really look at those two consoles as running down parallel tracks. I think they're very similar um, in a lot of ways. Um, they both almost seemed like they were released a little too early for the generation they belonged in. Um, and, you know, they both have been ported to death, which we've already said. Um, and they both have great games, and they're actually very great, functional, fun consoles to play. And I, and I love how the Wii U, you know, has stuff on the tablet, kind of like how we're talking about the Dreamcast memory card stuff. It does that same thing. And it's so sad because everything's ported to the switch now so like if if you want to play wii u games there's no point to buy a wii u and it, it sucks because the wii u is such a great console and i love it like the tablet is so fun i i think you both hit the nail on the head but when i was looking over the subject list ahead of time that instantly came to mind oh yeah wii u like that's not even debatable like that yeah. that is the most underrated console outside of the dreamcast i was doing videos on it for years like passionately like you guys need to get this thing it's incredible like look at this game and this game and this game and we could talk about the history of the wii u to death but Largely, I think what hurt the Wii U the most was the name Wii, because everyone just thought either either you thought, oh, it's a piece of crap like the Wii was, or you they marketed towards a base that didn't understand video games, so people thought it was just a big controller for the Wii that they didn't need. Yeah, um, it, it kind of just sounds like it's an accessory or something, yeah. Yeah, a very misunderstood platform full of incredible titles. There still are a bunch of cool exclusives to it, but they're obviously dwindling because you're right. Nintendo is just absolutely, you know, pillaging that and just putting everything they can onto the switch. So at the moment you're still sitting on like super Mario maker one super, Mar- th- um, super Mario 3d world, uh, the first Splatoon, yep. but Which then you start to run great. out. But then, <laughs> you know? but then like with the, with the release of super Mario maker two, most people aren't going to go back and play the first one because it's basically the same game, and but it's better, and so it's like, ah, oh, man. Exactly. Give it, a, give it a shot. I think yep. Pikmin 3 is still hanging on. I could be yep, wrong. Yep, Pikmin 3. Good call. But, uh, all right, since we all kind of universally agree it seems to be the Wii U, does anybody have a runner-up? Hmm. I know. that was the. At first, I was going to say Saturn. Yeah, that came to mind. It came to mind for me because the Saturn is another very misunderstood console. The problem with the Saturn is that the North American library is just so comically limited in what was actually worth playing. Um, and then we, but Japan got so many great games that we never got. And it's, it's still this strange console because it's so hard to emulate and all that stuff. And there's all these games that you're just like, wow, I had no idea this thing existed. Then it's like fantastic. But at the same time, if you're like list your top five Saturn games, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> like, yeah. There's something about it that I, I agree with you. Like, I don't think it's all, I mean, this is bad to say probably, but it, it's just not, I have one and I'm really glad that I do, but it's of my retro consoles, probably the least played other than my Atari 2600. Um, but well, another one I'd bring up, and it's one that I really don't know much about. I just never had access to one. And obviously I've played a few games here and there, but uh, the Turbo Graphics 16, I've always been, I've always had fun when I play it. Um, now again, I can't really speak to the extent of the whole library because I'm I'm novice in that realm. But I always felt like, man, I wish I kind of would have had one of those growing up. I think that's a very good answer. I mean, that actually is very similar to the Saturn because both of those just crushed it in Japan. Tons of exclusive games, really super popular over there. Dead as a doornail over here. The difference, though, at least Saturn, people knew what it was. Granted, I didn't yeah. grow up knowing what it was. I was like you, Robert, with the Dreamcast. Like, yeah, I had no idea what you're Saturn like, what the heck is this? Uh, for me, it went like, oh, they did Genesis, and then all of a sudden Dreamcast. Like, there was nothing in between. I knew about yeah. 32X, but that didn't really count. Um, but TurboGrafx-16, I think I heard of it as a kid, but nobody had it. Nobody had it. I remember, like, 
it was a rumor on the playground. It was like one kid would say, oh, yeah, like my my cousin's friend who lives like in another state has one. And that's it. Like <laughs> you never knew anyone who actually had it. You knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who claimed yep. to have one. Yeah, same same with me growing up. And I, I the thing is, I remember seeing like that orangish ad with like silhouette people type of thing in some gaming magazine, and always wondering what is this thing. I just really never knew. And then obviously, when you start doing stuff like this and you become a collector, then you you stumble across everything. But uh, yeah, it uh, it's definitely got had some mystique around it in my neck of the woods. Yeah, and those would be underrated consoles that I think are actually worth playing. There is a, uh, we could maybe do this another subject at some point, but underrated consoles where the console was good, but it never got a chance, so it like has terrible software on it. I, I did a video about this a while back where I was like, what makes a game console good? You can look at something like the Neo Geo X, which I would argue is a piece of shit. Because it was poorly made, terrible design, but it has an incredible library of games because it has all the Neo Geo AES library of games on it. But then you look at something like the Apple Pippin, which was a very well-designed machine, but nothing was made for it. Are both of these pieces of shit? And if they are, they are for completely different reasons. So if the Apple Pippin had good games on it, then fantastic. But that's not simple enough to define because the Neo Geo X has great games on it, but it's a piece of crap. So you, know, you see what I'm saying? It's not yeah. like, oh, games are the only thing. I so, was totally with you up until the Scotty Pippen or the Apple Pippen or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know what. Yeah, I've never is, heard of that either. I, know, I did a video on it. Apple thing, made though. one video game console ever. Okay. And I'm not an Apple fan. I do not like their products. I want to be very clear about that. But I wanted to have one just because, like, that's so bizarre. They yeah. made it in this weird phase where Steve Jobs left Apple, and before okay. he came back, as soon as he came back, he cut the cord on it. He was like, "We're not doing this." Um, so it came out in Japan as the Bandai Pippin. Uh, it had like 70 games released. The North American version came out like barely and then was immediately recalled. And the European version, only a couple of units like leaked out early. Wow. And that's it. You, it's, it's a, it's like a ghost, an enigma in Apple's history. But the, the actual hardware, it's actually the most powerful console in the fifth generation. It's more capable than the N64. It, wow. it was the thing released right before the Dreamcast, but like nobody knows about it because it's so damn obscure. I have one. I've got two games for it that I've ever found. It's what it, are they? Uh, what are the games like that you have? I mean, do you, do you um, like them? One is like a Gundam uh, RTS type of thing, and the other is a racing game called Racing Days. That's just a racing game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like it's that, but like, dude, anytime. I ever find a Pippin game, I just buy it. I don't even care what it costs. Like, get me this shit because <laughs> they do not exist. The They're Apple enigmas. Pippin. Um, but that the, the point I was trying to make there is not that console's underrated because it's not. It doesn't really have anything on it worth playing. But is it is that the reason it's underrated, or could you say it's underrated because it never had the chance to have full games? But that's a totally different discussion. Yeah, I mean, I I, I mean to kind of. I don't know, kind of simplify it. I, I've always felt like the software drives the hardware. Um, I've always, uh, you know, as a consumer, I, I, I would say I probably grew up more of a Nintendo kid, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to play good games. I didn't really care. Um, and if a console had good games, it made me want to buy it. Um, you know, and, and so I, I guess the, the thing would be if it was a, an awesome system and there's nothing to play on it, that's kind of a turd. But what if it's got amazing games on it that are basically unplayable because the hardware is bad, like the Neo Geo X? Yeah, I mean, that's that. You see my think, point, though? Yeah, it's yeah, not that fall into the same cut. thing. If you can't, it's not that black and white. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you kind of fall into. I gave up, um, you know, this is kind of more of a uh, household name that I'm going to say, but I gave up on the 360 when I had, when I went through a ton of them because it was just failing over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Um, that I is a much better example. Terrible hardware that kept yeah. breaking down. Amazing yep. game Amazing library. game library. And yeah. it's such a sweet console, too. It's and like, dang it. I literally jumped off uh, after I think I had my second or third Red Ring of Death. I sold all my stuff, and I, I, I had a PS3 at the time, and I never looked back until now. Um, now that, you know, the Elite came out and all that stuff, now I've got a, a de I'm building my library back up. But, uh, yeah, you got to be able to... I think, it, I think they both... You know, it's hard to say they're they're bad consoles, but I think both points that you make, Adam, are are you know make it a bad console. In Fair both enough. regards, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, any other thoughts on this subject, either of you? 
No. Uh, no. It's fun talking about this stuff. I do know that. It is. All right, well, then we'll move on to the next one, which may not be quite as fun. Unpopular gaming opinions. Ooh, this is going to get tense. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm just going to open up with one that I've kind of said, but now I'm going to be very bold about. I do not like JRPGs, like at all. Um, you, you throw Final Fantasy at me or any of that stuff, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't want to yeah. play this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I already see your faces because I can see you two. I can see that look. Is it because of the time length it takes you. to play them? Is that why? <laughs> Say what? Is it because of how long it takes to play those games? Is no, that I just, I've never enjoyed the whole thing with turn-based combat and all that type of stuff. I just, I don't enjoy that. I find that tedious. I don't, I've never had fun with it. Um, and I recognize that, like, man, there's, like, a lot of people who love that genre. But the whole point of this subject is unpopular gaming. Opinion. Yeah. <laughs> no, I totally, um, I used to somewhat uh, dabble, like, uh, through about the Super Nintendo era. But I think the reason Robert probably brought up that time, that I will probably never play an RPG again. Um because of the content creating that type of stuff um you know we're, we do music too we're in a band as well there's just i do not have time to put 500 hours into a freaking yeah game. it's just it's just never gonna happen again probably yeah um, you have to be a kid to be able to do that yeah but i i do i mean i i i can't i can't really get i don't your comment doesn't ruffle my t- tail feathers if that makes sense i totally get it mm-hmm. i did like them for a little bit but i they are tedious and you know i've always kind of told people i think you got three rpgs in you in a lifetime and then you've kind of done it. you know the, like how many more times do you need to go through a game that has turn-based combat i i actually agree that is a good way of putting it although yeah, i have I, to admit i did like uh south park the fractured butthole yes Ooh, but, see that uh, yeah that, that's I have different both those games but i'm just such a south park fan yeah that that's why that same humor that I'm really to, willing to go through a grind to get to the next joke. I, I agree completely. That was pretty much the thing that got me running through that. Yeah. All right, well, um, I said mine, so what do you guys got? Yeah, this one, uh, you know, it's it's not a hate thing. I don't hate the game, but I think it is. Just, I've just never really enjoyed playing it, and that's Super Mario 64. Um, really? Ouch, I'm, ouch. I'm very into the precision of the side-scrolling platformers uh, Mario games that, that preceded it and I've just always felt this element of I can't hit exactly where I want to hit in the game and ma- people probably like, will get better at the game there's a fundamental first you know d- dive into 3d that makes it very very tough to have your like depth perception and perspective um, and I've even seen people play it that are really, really good at it, and they they make little th- little errors and stuff. And I'm like, you just can't be as precise as I feel like I want to be when I play a Mario game. That's that's a good point, but it also hurts because that was the first game I ever played. First yeah, Mario well, game first I ever game played. Ever played sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know I I actually empathize because even though I do like that game, I remember like screaming at the TV a lot because I would miss you know jumps and shit. Yeah, you got to like, watch your but shadow. I aim there. Why yeah. didn't it quite work? <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and it's weird. I I, I I like some of the subsequent 3D Marios. Like, I like Mario 3D World. I like Odyssey. But I still... It's weird. Um, in my mind, I don't feel like I have the control even of those games that I do where I can just, like, speed run those other Mario games and, and just kick ass. Um, and I miss that. I miss that surgical... Um, ability to master them where I don't feel like that applies to the 3D games if that so makes sense let me ask sense. you this are you into Super Mario Maker um, I do I do like it I, pl- I haven't played the new one which shame on me I really need to get it but the first one I have on the Wii U and I do enjoy it I just like the challenge mm-hmm. um, you know but I it still it doesn't really there's something weird about I don't quite get the fil- fulfillment out of beating someone else's levels as I do of like conquering a game that Nintendo put out there for me is like wanted to challenge me when I was a kid or something that's um, valid it, that's valid yeah I mean it you can't really you know wear a badge of honor like hey Adam uh I just uh speed ran Jimmy Smith's level that he put up there what do you think was you know, it Jimmy it's, Smith it's, 87 or Jimmy yeah, Smith you don't know there's so many Jimmy Smith yeah. one, Jimmy Smith 72 is a fucking idiot I don't care yeah. what he says but no, you know, where like if you, you know, it's just, it's not really, you can't put that notch in your badge, I guess, with those levels. Um, so it's more of a time killer for me than anything. Um, but it, it's fun. I do enjoy it. Fair. Robert, what about you? Uh, I'm going to make a lot of people mad. Uh, um, so I've been thinking about the point. This, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and we've actually talked about this on the channel a couple of times. I've never played a Zelda game, and I don't get why Zelda's so big. Like, it just. 
I just don't get it. All right, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I, have to defend you a little. Yeah, bit. I, I know people so, are gonna fight me on it, but like I don't see. I get if I put time into it, I'd probably like it, but I just don't get why it's so huge. So, like I said, I'm gonna defend you. <laughs> oh, you're gonna I, defend me? Not, okay. I'm not offending you, defending you. I'm on your side here. I don't dislike Zelda, but I also don't get it. The only two I've ever beaten are the NES games. I thought they were fine. Uh, and even as a kid, I thought they were fine. Um, I think I played a lot of the, the Game Boy, like, um, Link's Awakening. It was fine. Um, I eventually, I've been wanting to try the others. To I want to see what it is that everyone else is saying. But I'm yet to discover it, much like yourself. Yeah, I think maybe if I put, like, the time into them, but... I feel like those games take so long to beat, too. And it could be because, you know, a lot of people grew up playing Zelda and when they were kids, you know, they have the nostalgia and they, they had the time to put into it. So that could be I might have missed a window. But I don't know. It's just it's just a weird thing. And I know Wes is probably over there getting all mad because he loves Zelda. But. Yeah. I'm ready to walk out there and choke slam. Just, <laughs> hey, to be fair, I'm not saying Zelda's bad. Yeah, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying it's bad. Saying, I don't totally get it. I just don't get it either. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I do it. <laughs> It, there is an element of annoyance sometimes with how much people love it, but um, that first game on the NES, it just for me, and it's more of a nostalgic thing. I think there a lot you of go, games, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I think I think it kind of depends, and you know, um, we talked about Robert and I's age gap already. I, I think the console that Robert probably played the most growing up would have been the PS2. Well, put that in perspective, where would he have played a Zelda? Yeah, there's no Zelda on that. Um, but yeah, the NES one I really like. I do like the 64 ones. I was a big fan, although it's not a traditional Zelda game of Breath of the Wild. See, that one looks... I just love the way that one looks visually. That one looks really yeah. sweet. But yeah, I mean, this is all about ruffle and feathers. So I mean, I can I can get it. I, I totally get it. There And there's, uh, there's also the aspect of... Once a series gets so big and obtuse, it's almost almost defeating. Where do you start? It's so it's intimidating. intimidating. I mean, where do I jump in? How do I find myself in this realm of Zelda? Since I've never played them, do I start at the beginning on the NES and play through them all, or do I start with the new one? I know Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out soon, so I, do I start with that one, or do I pick one in the middle? And I know eventually I'll probably you know, play them and give them time, and I might. I might love them, but um, yeah, right now, I, it's in, intimidating, and I just don't get it. It's a huge, it's like, it's so crazy, because people make it such a big deal, like it's Mario and stuff, and you know, Mario's huge too, but I just don't think they're on the same level. So, uh, in the context of Zelda and Ruffling Feathers, I'm going to say something. The Let's Zelda CDI games, not actually that bad. Dude, that's I've never played them, but I have heard that they're hot garbage, but that's interesting. Um, they're not good. They're they're not <laughs> they're not <laughs> like bad. <laughs> they're not I mean, again, I don't come from a background of being like a massive Zelda fan. And maybe that's why I think that cuz what I have played of them, I was like, this is fine. This is an acceptable game. I'm probably not acceptable by Zelda standards, but fine. What now, if, what if that, the reason that's you're not I a huge... think that someone like Robert might appreciate them more, because he's going in kind of unbiased. Like, look, yeah. I already think Zelda's kind of unimportant to me. Maybe I'll just enjoy this as a game. Or it'd Maybe be interesting that's... to see you, Wes, play it, and you'd be like, fuck, God damn it! <laughs> like, this is not supposed to be how it goes. I, I have I think, a feeling that way, might be that why you don't love Zelda, because you played those. Make, is to sit down and play the Zelda CDI games together. And just see what your different reactions would be. That would be really fun. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, we might have to figure it out. It's the name of my company. Yep. Um, Boom. I have. I well, if, if we have, where are you guys based? If you don't mind me saying, or asking. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, you're not that far. I'm in Chicago. What we could do sometime, if we want to, we'll meet up, and I'll pay the, I'll pay it forward. I'll show up on your channel. I'll bring a CDI, and I'll bring those games. And I'll just sit there and laugh as the two of you have to suffer through it. I mean, enjoy it. Ro that could be that could be Robert's first Zelda game. Now that would be something. That would, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's let's cross let's, a bunch of things we, off. We a can list. talk about making this happen. I'm I'm game for the idea. Yeah, that that sounds okay. awesome. I think okay. it would be hilarious for Robert's first Zelda game to be a CDI Zelda. Which one do you want, or do you need to do the research on that? I would probably need to do the research. Right. Um, There's three yeah. of them. Uh, there's two that were like a brother and sister release. One where you actually play as Zelda. And I mean that, not Link. I mean Zelda. See, that's, a, Zelda. that's another thing that I don't get either. Zelda <laughs> and Link. It's so confusing. Link is I'm, the main character, but I, Zelda's the princess. But the game is called Zelda, and you don't play as <laughs> Zelda. It doesn't make... Like, I remember, since I've never played them, I remember like Smash Bros. on the GameCube. 
Link was a character or Zelda was a character. It was so confusing. It's like, <laughs> what is going on? All right. Well, I, I think we've just come up with a video that we need to make together. I think that'll I be fun. Totally um, agree. But okay. All right. We're get, we'll save that for later. We're done with unpopular opinions, unless there's something else you want to say. Zelda's the only one that was on the top, top of my head. Okay. Then we'll move on. Um, the next subject uh, is just a round of shout outs. I want to thank everyone on Patreon. Because, again, I should have mentioned this before. This is a Patreon-backed podcast, so this comes out early for people who are backers. Uh, they also get early access to all the videos I produce, this one especially. But um, there are people who donated different tiers, not only to get early access, but you can uh, you can get shout-outs, and you can even be on the podcast, such as Wubio uh, brought you guys on here for that purpose. Um, but shout-outs. We got the following people. Kayla Bravo, Trevor Underwood. Corey Marsh, Jesse Perez, Joseph Tamburino, Luis Bonilla, Michael Kelly, Eric Perales, and Trey Wagner. Once again, that's Caleb Bravo, Trevor Underwood, Corey Marsh, Jesse Perez, Joseph Tamburino, Luis Bonilla, Michael Kelly, Eric Perales, and Trey Wagner. Thank you very much to all of you. I appreciate the support from everyone out there. It's awesome to help keep the channel going. It's great. Um, but we shall move on. We're going right back to you guys. We have another subject up here that you guys, I thought was an interesting one because I never really bring this up, probably because of the actual nature of the subject. But the subject is... Avoiding YouTube drama. So bring it on. What do you got here? Uh, well, currently, if you don't know, uh, YouTube drama is really hot right now. It's all over Twitter. It's all over YouTube. You know, people are getting in fights. People are getting heated. And it's it's just bad. And I just... It's, it's so weird that people dive into that stuff. And they some people thrive in the drama. And I just don't get it. Like, it's just... When I see drama, I just, like, kind of ignore it and look the other way. And if, like, there's drama... In like our comment section or anything i'll just ignore it and because we're all about like positivity and just having fun and like i don't see the point of drama it's just dumb i don't get it um i'm with you on that uh, but to look at it from the other perspective the reason a lot of youtubers i'm not going to mention any specifically because much like you i like to avoid drama uh a lot of them do it because their fan base will click on it you will get yes, a lot of attention it is so it's, it's a quick I, way to i get why clicks. they do that yeah but at the same way it's like why? Why did you go there? <laughs> no, I, I agree with you completely. I, I, but that's the reasoning generally behind it. That and other people, people are naturally argumentative. That's how human beings are. We yeah. all get into little clusters and groups and then fight over each other. That's just how we are as a species. We're stupid. But um, so, I, I, yeah, personally, I'm with you completely. I try to avoid that stuff. I don't get into like YouTube wars with people. And over the years, I've, like I said, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've had a lot of people make videos like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Well, I'm like, that's cool. I don't, yeah, it's I, cool. I don't know you. why I'm supposed to care. It's like, it's some stranger. I don't know. He's not a friend. Why am I supposed to respect his opinion? Yeah, exactly. Sure. I'm here to like talk about what I want to talk about. I'm here to have fun and enlighten people as best I can. You want to watch, that's cool. You don't want to watch, you don't have yeah. to. It's, yeah, if you don't like our stuff, on the whole thing. if you don't like our videos, fine there's plenty of other things to watch like i love when people put hateful comments and stuff it's like wow you actually took the time to watch and comment this when you could be doing so many other things <laughs> oh, wait till you guys get making people get and make videos about you oh, that's I'm, that one i'm fun. excited for that day yeah no it's it's just like to laugh at it people just people you don't know <laughs> make up stuff about you that they think is true for some reason and you're like okay <laughs> like whatever Personally, I never engage in any of that stuff. I'm just like, this isn't worth my time to deal with. It's I don't need to acknowledge this. It, the way I look at it is kind of the way traditionally most presidents, U.S. presidents, look at North Korea. They just kind of go, I don't care when you tout your chest and say we're going to blow you up. You just go, yeah, yeah, whatever. You just ignore that because they're lunatics. It's the same kind of approach. I, I just kind of go, yeah, that's that's, that's a great. pretty. I don't. Funny. I'm going to do my thing. You you focus on being full of hate. I'm going to focus <laughs> on having some fun. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's a good question that that we wanted to talk with you about because I mean, the size of your channel and and we've always you you've never you don't go there, you know, and you didn't mm -hmm. have to go there to get where you're at. And I just think it's it's admirable and just didn't you know kind of want to know like how you you know because like you always I guarantee you at some point you kind of took one on the chin where you're like, damn it, I want to say something about this. Oh yeah. You know, um, but you know, the fact that you've, you've maintained your, your channels about it, you've built a channel, I think of followers that they want to come hang out with Adam Corlick and they aren't clicking on, you know, the subjects become, you know, whatever they are, they still want to listen to you talk about it. It's not because you're like, Hey, I'm going to talk shit about this person or that person or start all this stuff because I don't think you build a loyal follower when you do that. 
Um, I agree. I never quite looked at it that, that way, but I guess that's true. Like I said, I just avoid drama. I just want to like talk and discuss whatever. If you want to watch, that's cool. You want to hang? That's cool. I, I have kind of, I guess, described it that way to some extent. So thank you. I appreciate that. That came yeah. through. Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely been times where certain individuals, again, without names, uh, have just been like, you know, you, you, they make videos and they make all this crap up. And I'm like, I just, I don't even care. <laughs> like, it's yeah. it's not worth my time to care about any of this stuff. Like, well, I do not know this person. I don't know these people. I don't know why I'm supposed to respect their opinion. You know, it's like, you you want to make stuff up. If that's, if that's worth your time, it's actually kind of flattering to me that you would take the time to try to create a foundation of hate around me on your channel. Like, that's, if that's your life, I'm sorry your life sucks. But I got better things to do than be like, well, no, he said this, and actually <laughs> this is what the truth is. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I'm going to go, I'm going to continue to keep doing the things I always did. It's just well, so, it's so crazy because if you boil it down, we're just a bunch of people that play video games. So, I know. <laughs> like, and video games are fun. Like, I don't get why we can't just talk about video games and be nerds together. Yeah. yeah. Well, I also think, I think what happens too is like, they don't even realize they're doing this to themselves, but they're watering down their own opinions. Like how many, when's the last time you actually read the cover of a national Enquirer? Why? Cause it's always just hot. It's just, you can just tell it's bullshit. Where like if, if next week, Adam, if you came out with a video that was like, you had a stance on something, I'd be like, Holy shit. Adam never goes there that he has to, this, whatever he's saying must really be, pointed and he's got to get this off his chest where when you're doing it every single video and there's drama every single it, it, it becomes very national inquiry and then people quit the tabloids you know yeah news for views is a very fleeting idea it, it doesn't last long and drama especially like you will burn your channel out i mean i'm never going to be a big popular youtuber but i've been around for 10 years and there is a reason for that like i far exceeded my life expectancy on youtube like <laughs> by far but i am well, still here because i don't do shit like that from our perspective advice. you guys could easily do the same thing from our perspective you are a big youtuber adam and uh yeah, yeah so just want to i get appreciate that off you chest. i appreciate you trying to give me the 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 hand job there but no it's good yeah, yeah. We're, we're good no <laughs> thank you though it was under the table i promise i, I it, it was nice but it, it was just not really necessary so. <laughs> um so, but yeah, I mean, so any other aspects of the avoiding YouTube drama thing? No, I just wanted to kind of see how you did it, man, and how, and kind of your stance on it, and, and just, I think well, we're kind of on the same page. So, okay, so again, there have been people that have tried to create conflict with me. I don't engage in it. That's really my response is, like I said, I deal with it the way most U.S. presidents have dealt with North Korea. You just go, that guy's a looney tune. I don't really care. I'm ignoring that. Um, despite whatever their actions are. And there has been some really strange ones over the years. Uh, but again, I don't want to engage in it. So I'm not even going to discuss the specifics of it here because then you just start going on this unhealthy road. Yeah, so yeah. that's really the advice I go. It's just like, I, I don't know why I'm supposed to care what that guy thinks. I don't know that person. Why am I supposed to respect them? I'll respect people I know. I'll respect people who are interesting, people who are knowledgeable, not people who get in front of them like, and be like I don't like him because like um, he did this one thing once that was like not totally right, and so I'm gonna make a whole video about that, and then I'm gonna sell merchandise about that. And it's like <laughs> you're a fucking idiot and a lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> like, but anyway, well, that's, so it's that's the kind of shit I'm just like, okay, I'll move on. Anything else? No, I think that's good there. Yeah, I just like yeah, just don't just avoid just don't it. And engage, dude. Just yeah, really just don't simple. engage, avoid it and just have fun and play video games. Like that. Precisely. That's all you need to do. Yep. Uh, okay, so moving on, the next subject you guys had, I thought was also pretty fascinating. You guys are so much better coming up with subjects than I am. Um, I'm actually kind of jealous of that skill. Um, <laughs> well, there's two of us, so it makes it a little yeah, bit exactly. easier. You can like fine tune it together. I couldn't do shit. Um, the next one up is decline of couch co-op gaming and can it return? You guys obviously mentioned that you do that a lot so i'm gonna let you lead that one as well so couch co-op is you know kind of our our thing you know since we're a two-man channel and you know back in the day couch co-op gaming was the thing like that's how everyone game together and now with online gaming and everyone has headsets and yeah i i play games online and they're fun but sitting down in a room with people having a few beers if you drink and just playing video games that is the best way to game I think because it's so much fun sometimes you pause the game and you're just laughing and it's just like man I want it to come back but will it ever come back with this online stuff I don't know 
Yeah, it's tough, too, because there's a lot of games that come out that, you know, uh, one that jumps out to my the forefront of my mind, um, like World War Z, when that came out. I think that's what it's called. It's like a zombie game. Why was that not a couch co-op game? Like, oh, yeah. Like, but it was only online. And it's frustrating because there's a lot of games that come out, like the new Red Faction games or newer Red Faction games. That was such a fun multiplayer game. Like, Red Faction 2, I love that game. That game's badass. Um, but then you get the new ones, and they're like they're great games, but you can only play them online. It's like, man, that four player split screen is. There so are fun. some games that are still doing it, like Borderlands Three, for example. That is a modern couch co op game, and that game is badass. It's a, I love that they did that. But in the grand scheme of things, what else is there that's modern? I know there's probably a couple here and there, but everything's online, and everything is. I mean, we can talk about stuff being online and digital, but that's. It's just frustrating. Like, man, couch co-op gaming is so much fun. So I'm going to say this, uh, because you asked the question, like, can it ever return? And the answer is no. And the reason I think that is, it's obvious that the primary reason everybody blames it on the internet and playing online. Like, that that part's true. But if you you dive into it a little deeper, really, couch co-op gaming is like a remnant of the blockbuster era. Because, like what you would do is you'd go out, rent a movie, rent a game, whatever, come back, and all your friends would play it together. The generation that only had access to couch co-op is the generation that misses couch co-op. The new generation doesn't know it, and so they're never going to be nostalgic for it. You're nostalgic for memories from the 90s, and I know I'm part of the same thing, but uh, I mean, if you think about it, that there were consoles that adapted to that. The N64, you have the hat right on there. Four controller ports. There was a reason for that. The Dreamcast, four controller ports. OG Xbox, four controller ports. The GameCube, GameCube four controller yep. parts, uh, ports. After the 6th gen, obviously we did wireless and you could have more controllers, but it just didn't matter. Like, no, How many people really sat down and did four, uh, a couch co-op of four players on an Xbox 360? Like, You could do it, but it's be- it's become so refined over time that is, I, I, I'm sad to say I think it's never really coming back just because... The generation that cares is also too old to really do it. That's the other thing that sucks. Is I may want to get sad. I know I may want to get three of my buddies together and sit down and play a game. But as you said, newer content doesn't really allow for it. And then everybody's like, "Oh, I got to work in the morning. I got kids. I got this. Yeah, it's hard to schedule things. Yeah, the kids who have time to play video games are doing it online. Yeah, and so it's. I'm sad to say that I think that that era of gaming was brief and is unfortunately basically over i it sucks to admit it but i i think i agree like i don't think it will ever come back and it's so sad and it's also so sad thinking about this new generation of gamers and kids that they'll never experience that and like man it i mean you can apply that to everything it's like oh man i wish you could have experienced this or that or that like nostalgia is such a big thing but I feel like couch co-op is such a huge staple in video games, or it could just be because I'm nostalgic for it, but... It is. I'm yeah. sorry to say it is. I agree I, I with you. The, Don't get me Switch wrong, I have pretty many wonderful memories of that, but it's it was, again, it's product of its time, but I, I don't think that it's... I don't think it's going to be around much longer. The Switch, I think, does an okay job. I mean, you, you obviously, you get your... Sm- it's not co-op, per se, because you're not working together, but Smash Ultimate, you know, I think mm-hmm. it's a pretty big game. I think people like playing those type of games together. Um, but, yeah, it's not the norm. Or I mean, that's the, still that's, that's still quality. couch co-op. I mean, because you're still sitting in the same room. Yeah. I, I mean, but a lot of people do play that game online, though. Yep. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is not that you can't play modern games that way, but it's becoming less and less normal, and it's never going to come back to what it was. Yeah, it yeah. Like I said, sure. it was at a point where console manufacturers literally designed the console to accommodate that concept. Now yep. it's more like, okay, it's a bonus feature. Yeah, for sure. They just you both look there. so depressed. I'm sorry. At, <laughs> well, it's just because it's, it's... Robert, you look like you're about to cry. No, it's because I'm so sad, you know? Well, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, yes, it's coming back tomorrow. The whole no, thing. it is. <laughs> I'm excited. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, well, so you brought up how they added it in like a side thing, like the new Contra game, for example, that game is fun. It's a single player game, but then there is a, there's a side thing you can do that's couch co-op. So it's cool that they did that, but it's just like a, oh yeah, we'll just give this to these few people that will actually play it, but here's the main game. And that'll yeah. be an unpopular gaming opinion. The new Contra game is fun. People have been bashing. Yeah, that is true. I forgot. It. It's a fun game. <laughs> Any other things you want to say about the decline of couch co-op? No, it's just... Uh, just that I'm going to cry myself to sleep tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> no, I well, see. I mean, look forward to playing your first Zelda game on the CDI soon. You've got that. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward That'll to that. That'll be some couch co-op that we'll will all be. get together, and you'll play Zelda for the first time, and it will be one of the CDI games. So you know, excited. It, there will be a, that will be, at that moment in time, I'm almost positive we will be the only three guys couch co-oping Zelda CDI oh, in the world. Dude, we're going to do it big. We're gonna. I've got an RGB modded one. We're going to bring it out with the Frame Meister. Like, we're going to go big or go home here. Go big <laughs> or go home. <laughs> yes. yes. I am excited. Very. Yeah. So uh, the, that was the last subject you guys had. I had just one more before we wrap up here, which was basically what I call the video roundup. I just kind of want to talk about stuff that's coming up. So do you guys have upcoming videos or projects or anything you want to talk about here? Yeah, so we uh, we are always uh, uploading on Mondays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Um, we live stream Sunday nights. It's called our Nightcap. We invite folks if um, to grab their favorite beverage and wrap up the week with us um, going live. So that schedule is always built in. Um, and uh, we don't waver off of that uh, unless it's extra content. So there, there yeah. is sometimes that we'll upload, you know, if it's a time sensitive video or something in between there. Um, but yeah, as far as big things coming up on the channel, I mean, we, uh, you know, this doing this with you is a pretty big thing. Pretty huge. Um, we, uh, you know, won't be going to any. Con- <laughs> <laughs> the Zelda video going- will be interesting. No, we won't be going to any uh, conventions until Midwest Gaming Classic. Um, yeah, so PR- PRGE was, you know, a pretty big thing leading up. Which, man, that was really fun. Th- that's the best one of the year, man. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was a blast. Um, yeah, but other than that, just regular content, just having fun. It's, you know, it's starting to get winter time, so. I feel like things are starting to calm down. Like during the summer, everything's crazy because you're still trying to put out content, but then also it's nice outside and all this other stuff. So winter time is usually when we, you know, calm down. We focus. We try and plan out everything. And I guess there is a video probably coming out closer to Christmas. Uh, it'll be round two. Nobody probably cared the first time, and who knows if anybody will care now of beard versus beard. We do a best <laughs> best two out of three in uh, Smash Brothers, and the other person gets uh, shaved uh, their beard off on camera. Which is not fair. I know this is an audio podcast, but I have a huge beard and Wes doesn't, so it's not even close to being fair. Sorry. Um, not, sorry. <laughs> All you got to do is win the game and you get to keep yeah, the beard. I, I won last year. Let's see if I can do it again. I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll know very quickly if you don't because it'll be gone. <laughs> yeah. And it would be really cold. It's like a scarf. Oh, dude. When I've shaved mine a handful of times ever, it's like it's just your face is freezing. It's like, what happened? It's just so uncomfortable. So, yeah, <laughs> I understand. Um, from my perspective, uh, yeah, so I got back from PRGE. I've been basically doing all the videos I need to post throughout November and December. Um, I did one last night. No- I'm calling it like one last Blockbuster night. Um, the And I-, I filmed a whole thing in Blockbuster, like the renting a video, the whole process. Um, awesome. The thing is, when the majority of people listen to this, all these videos will have come out. But to the Patreon backers, these these uh, they're going to hear this before these videos come out. So... Here, depending on when you watch this, here's what you have to look forward to, or here's what you missed. Um, yeah. The block, one last blockbuster night. Um, my buddy Terry, who owns the Nintendo PlayStation prototype, uh, he let me have access to it for a day while I was there, and I did like uh, an entire video, like reviewing it and talking about it, its history, all that kind of stuff. Because he's probably going to sell it soon, so it's it won't be in public hands much longer. Interestingly, uh, if he sells it and doesn't attend another convention, then I was the last person ever to play it. Wow. Yeah, because I I was the one who connected it and then ultimately disconnected it. So I was like, ah, I'm going to play it for a second. Okay, (laughs) I'm the last one who played it. Uh, I have footage of that moment, by the way, so that'll be a thing. That's very cool. Um, I'm I'm excited to see that. Yeah, I did my, um, my... I do a monthly pickups video where I just like all the new things I got for one reason or another. I did that. That'll come out at the end of this month. Uh, I have... Uh, some video cable videos about Sega Genesis with HDMI, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know how much familiar you are with the videos I do, but I've done a lot of things where I call them like generation recaps, where you go back yep. to a specific console and just tell its story and all that stuff. There's a whole bunch of game consoles that I never got to do because I didn't own them, um, so I'm in pre-production on doing those, mostly Japanese ones that never came out. Ooh, that's gonna be really um, sweet. Yeah, and then in November we're gonna hit the PS4 and Xbox One's sixth birthday. If you can, believe wow, that. they're both six years old. Uh, so I'm gonna do videos on each one of those. So it's busy. And then of course I got this podcast. So thank you very much for making that job a lot easier. So uh, anything else you guys want to say? Like, where can people find you? 
Uh, oh, and we got to do that. I'm dead serious about the Zelda video. Like, oh, I want to yeah. come out so tomorrow and we're going to do this damn video. Yeah, we will. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. Yeah. We need to make it happen. We're close enough. We can make it work. But yeah, so, uh, uh, sorry. Where where can people find you? Uh, YouTube, obviously, at Gaming Off The Grid. Um, then on the socials, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, MySpace. I'm just kidding. No, I wish one. we had a MySpace. <laughs> That'd be so cool. But YouTube is our primary. We upload twice a week with a weekly live stream. And it's a lot of fun. Come hang out if you like stupid humor and beer. <laughs> So is it just gaming off the grid on all the platforms? Yep. Okay, perfect. So there you go, guys. Go ahead and give him a follow if you can. Uh, you guys obviously follow me if you're watching this. But uh, I also have all the Instagram and Twitter and stuff. It's just my name, Adam Korlick. You can go look all that stuff up if you haven't already. Uh, I want to thank you both, uh, Wes and Robert, for being on here. Thank Wubio so much for making that a thank possibility. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Wubio's a good dude. Wubio's a good dude. Uh, he, he is. is yeah. He's uh, He's been following our channel for quite some time. So, yeah, we've uh, we've taught. he's been in live streams. He's a good egg for sure. He is. He is. Um, yeah, actually, you know, what's funny is if, if you weren't available, do you want to know who his second choice was? Who? Kelsey Lewin. Wow. wow. She's one of my best friends, but I never even brought it to her attention because I was just waiting to, to find out if you guys wanted to do it. So yeah, you guys beat her to it. So there you go. You got, I think um, you got the short end of the stick on that one, Adam. I'm just got to <laughs> no, tell you. <laughs> I went to her wedding. Like we hang out. That's, that's nothing, you know, like, yeah. but I, I don't really get to chat with you guys. I text she, her she, on a regular basis to annoy the crap out of her. Um, but, uh, anyway, so. Yeah, thank you very much for being on there. Also, want to thank all the Patreon backers, uh, especially the shoutouts once again: Caleb Bravo, Trevor Underwood, Corey Marsh, Jesse Perez, Joseph Tamburino, Luis Bonilla, Michael Kelly, Eric Perez, Trey Wagner. Thank you guys, and thank you too. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, follow them, and we'll see you all later.